We're not uh, concerned for the storm surge in that part of Corpus Christi, but we are terribly concerned for the storm surge threat, the wind threat, and the flooding threat for the entire uh, Corpus Christi area, especially to the north of the city. Let me tell you a little, the only slice of good news in this entire thing is between Corpus Christi here and Port O'Connor and Port Lavaca up in here. This is a very unpopulated part of that Texas coast. The coastal bend, this is called, in Texas right there. Did you contact her? No, I'm, I'm Tommy Allen. I've uh, I've lived through about seven hurricanes in my lifetime, but this one was probably the doozy of them all. Uh, no, the uh, the. What was it like before the storm? Man, I can't even remember what it was like before the storm. Uh, everything was peaceful around here and we had, we loved our, we bought the lot because of the trees. That's why we bought that house, because of the trees. And uh, plus the price was right. <laughs> but we, uh, we, we knew it had potential. We had three, three tornadoes cross the land, cross the property. And uh, man, if it wasn't for the, our our kids and for the the, I don't know what we would have done because we we've been up the creek without a paddle. Felt like it a lot of times. When we after, when we after the storm, I can guarantee you, I felt like I had PTSD because of the just the shock of things. I'd never seen that kind of devastation before. I mean, I've been, I, uh, I take that back. I saw, I saw Hurricane Celia, the aftermath of the Hurricane Celia in Corpus, but it didn't affect me. <laughs> it didn't affect me like, it didn't cost me anything. But we're still working with them, trying to get assistance because they have a program. It's a, it's a hurricane assistance program to where they, help replace, help pay for it, offset the, what the insurance didn't pay for. But we've been dealing with that for two and a half years. Okay, I had to give them, I had to give them insurance. Right. A copy of all the money we spent on everything. <clears throat> oh, well, and that didn't even include what we paid to do the outside of the house, no, which was, didn't. which was part of the hurricane damage. They, yes. they allowed us Mm -hmm. But I don't think I don't know what the insurance covered on. I don't remember what the insurance covered on that, on the on the exterior. Not hardly anything. I, I didn't think so. Because it was steel siding. Yeah, but still, it should have been should have gotten some. I mean, some from the insurance for that. I know they didn't give us so that's what they were supposed to. Insurance. Nothing for the trees. That's what I don't get. Used to, if you lost a big tree, they would pay you so much to have the tree replaced or. Now, no, no trees were covered, and that just... So we have bedroom three, wow. kitchen, bedroom and three. we don't have one on the living room. Because that was kind of in with the kitchen. Yeah, well, yeah, he figured that in with the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> Hollywood can't make a movie like it. I mean, they can try. Uh, some of the scenes in Twister, eh. It, it, nothing, there is nothing that Hollywood has put out that compares because they can't show the, Hollywood can't show the type of damage that we saw. We didn't hear a whole lot when it was going on, but afterwards, uh, when the eye came through, everything just went still. It was, we had about a 45 minute period during the eye of the storm when it was just quiet. And uh, 
then it came from the opposite direction and it was just like it was when it came in but it was uh, we had uh, the Army Corps of Engineers clocked it I know they, the media and everybody says it was like 138 to 148 mile an hour winds the Army Corps of Engineers clocked it at 156 miles an hour which makes it a mild category 5 I can guarantee you we had 150 plus mile an hour winds because the, the water was going so horizontal I'd never seen water blow horizontal like that the, and the rain that heavy where you couldn't see out near your yard uh, it, was, it was just it was nuts it really was the, and I was afraid to stick my head out or you know get out in it because I was afraid something was going to knock it out take my head off because the way that wind was and I could see stuff coming by but I didn't know what it was it was in the middle of the before the eye passed in the middle of all the the initial hurricane and everything we were sitting there and the lights were it was dark in the house well it was lamps are on but it was uh we were sitting there just we couldn't really hear the wind blowing because of the the windows and the insulation in the house the house is built really well we couldn't hear a lot going on but whenever the catalpa tree went down it was a big tree and it had deep roots big deep roots and when uh, the wind the tornado hit it and took it down it sounded like a cannon going off that's the only way i can only thing i can describe it as if you've ever heard of, uh, about an eight pound cannon shoot i couldn't tell what you know what it was at first until after the uh when the eye was coming over uh, coming over so i went out and took a look around and i saw our building was gone and our catalpa tree was down but and then at about the same time, about the same time the catalpa tree went down, the part of the roof to our little building went through our bedroom, through the storm shutters on our bedroom window and broke it out. So I had to go out to the garage and cut a piece of plywood during the storm to uh, fix the window and keep the wind and rain from coming in. Uh, other than that, I mean, well, we... We heard the ceiling, heard the ceiling crash down in the bed, in that third bedroom, and water was pouring out of the light fixtures in the bathroom and in the. And we had we had power until eight fifteen that night, and then we lost power and didn't have power until the next morning. We had candles and lamps and lanterns and what have you, but. The next morning, whenever I got the, we opened the door and I, we were both in shock. We couldn't get out our back door because the debris was stacked up so high in the back. Uh, I had to, I, I went around out of the front and climbed over stuff and under stuff to get, to try to find our horse. Our horse was in the, pa in the side pasture. Uh, and I was scared to death. He was dead. He didn't have a scratch on him. Before a horse died, uh, what two years ago now? It'll be two 2018. years. Two years, yeah. Uh, he's buried out there. He he was after the after the hurricane. He was never the same. He he didn't have a scratch on him, but he was so stressed out. From the workers. And that's that's one of the reasons why we stayed was because of him because we couldn't get him out of here. We couldn't get the horse out of here. Or else, where we were waiting on our the uh, driver, the uh, the guy that uh, was supposed to haul him over to his 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 ranch for us, uh, somebody stole his trailer, so he did, he was out of a trailer. We had there was all the way down from th that intersection back there down to 188. The, over, uh, the overpass at 188, there was wood stacked up probably 60, 80 feet up in there, wood and debris from around town. They they used the median because the median is wider there. They stacked it, stacked the, uh, they stacked it there. They stacked it from all over town. They took came and took loads, uh, load after load after load out there. And that's that's another thing we had. I've never seen 
a community come together like this one did. The the outpouring of help from around, all around. We had uh, we had people stay. We had uh, linemen for the power companies. They came from all over the United States. We had them from I think every state. We had over 200 trucks out at our airport, and they were all staged out there. And the, uh, the hotel they were staying in got hit by a tornado and the back end of it got ripped off. They were on the job as soon as the, the uh, morning broke, as soon as the, I mean, it was still raining, but they were out working the next morning. Everybody figured it was going to take, you know, six months before we got power back. And Rockport had, I mean, I, I've never seen a community come together like this one did. Uh, when they said Rockport strong, they meant it. It was people helping people. The Red Cross came in and provided meals. HEB, good Lord, what would we do without them? They, Walmart, I, I couldn't say anything good about them, but HEB, they were they were our 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 guardian angels. They were there the the next morning. Our first hot meal was was uh, a uh, one from the uh, Red Cross. And like I said, it was it was something else. It was something else. Never again. I don't I don't want to go through it again. I, I'd rather I'd rather this place just blow away and us not be here. <laughs> and not and then not deal with it again. I just I don't want to deal with it. But that was that was about it. We're uh, we feel blessed that we uh, we came through it with as well as we did because there's so many people around here that lost everything. Won't be in our lifetime, but once again, one of these days it'll be all covered like it was before. It'll be total totally covered which will be nice.